I really want to start with a sincere congratulations on the movie. I thought you did such a great job with this material and with the film. Um, the thing that I found fascinating is that his story is so incredible that you there's so many parts of his of his story that could be a movie. How much uh, uh, talk a little bit about focusing on this part of his life when there's so many other chapters too. Well, that's that wasn't my job. My was it's it's not it's not a mini series. It's 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 a film, and so. I wanted to start at the where at the point where I think there's a there's where the country is confronting itself in an extraordinary way, just in the sense that that, it, you know, it's Brown versus Board of Education has been in existence for quite some time. And the South is just pretending it doesn't exist. Uh, and so there's a sense of activism and a sense of responsibility. It's also at a time where many people have been engaged in the civil rights movement for quite some time, especially focusing on nonviolence. And that's not resulting in change. So they're beginning to consider whether or not they need to take a more aggressive point, a more up point of view, a more segregated point of view. And Bayard, who has been always out, as a as as in terms of a 1963 definition of an out gay man, you know there are there are things that that the FBI in particular have dug up about him and are threatening. So it feels like there's a pressure there's pressure coming from all different directions. Plus, they're trying to pull off the world's this country's largest peaceful protest in eight weeks. So that pressure dynamic him being tested, him grooming a whole generation of incredible young people to be smart, active, and committed to making their country better. All of that seemed to be the perfect equation to play around with. Instead of he was born, and then he grew up, and then he went to school, and then, you know, blah, blah, blah. So The thing that's so crazy, which I, I don't think people realize, is pulling off the march in eight weeks, no social media, no cell phones, I mean, it's it's really it's, it's it, you would think it would take a year to pull this thing off. So can you sort of talk about that aspect of how incredible he was just to be able to do this? Well, it's like even people who had issues with him, everyone connected to the civil rights movement knew that he was the most brilliant organizer. And he had that brain who did not skip or miss any detail. And he trained his team of kids to think that the same way. There was a there's this there was a speech in the in the film which isn't there anymore, in which he talked about every night I want you to begin, go from the beginning to the end of the march and think about every single detail and think about everything that you think you've solved and think about those spaces after those things that you think you've solved and see if there's something you're missing. And and what he was instructing them to do is what he did every single night, I believe, was going over the details over and over and over and making sure every single thing is done, including getting Mayor Wagner to alter the subway schedule, you know, for for a rush hour schedule for early in the morning so everybody could get their buses so they could get there. It's just no detail went 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 without him scrutinizing and picking at it and making sure everything flowed brilliantly. You, you bring up uh, editing, uh, and I love the editing process because it, it's where it all comes together. So talk a little bit about how the film changed in the editing room, perhaps in ways you didn't expect. Uh, there's certain th- it, it was a very interesting other people. It's like other people had relationships like a Philip Randolph had. There was a moment where where his wife was more involved than, and, and Bayard and her danced together. But it became. But that became extraneous because it was about a, a Philip Randolph's relationship with Bayard. And that kept on happening. The kids told the story about about how they got involved in activism. And that scene went away. And one of the most interesting things that, that left was Bayard spoke at the March on Washington. He, he read the list of demands. And, after, and, I, and it was in this film for a very, very long time. But I ended up eliminating it because it was A, it wasn't his language. It was just a, a list. And B, it didn't have a kind of poetry. And so the most poetic moment becomes, at the end, him picking up the trash and him continuing to do what he does, what, what he, what he all had, all, has, had always done, which is commit to making whatever he was connected to 
better and stronger and clearer, and in this case, cleaner. One of the things that I am waiting for Netflix to do, because they can do anything, is offer deleted scenes on the on Netflix or offer extras in a way that they sometimes don't do. Is that something you've talked to them about? Because I'd love to see Coleman do, you know what I mean? Like, I'd love to see some of these scenes. No, I, no, I haven't talked to him about that. Maybe I will. Thank you. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just throwing that out okay, there. Okay, absolutely. You know, and obviously, listen, I have to touch on, this is going to probably be my last thing, but I have to touch on Coleman's amazing performance. He's so brilliant in this. Uh, can you sort of talk about working with him in crafting this performance and what it was like on set when you needed something to be tweaked? And you know what I mean, just working with Coleman. Well, I work with him the, the same way I work with him on Ma Rainey, the way, same way I work with every other actor. We have our two-week rehearsal period, which is spent, you know, forming relationships, not only, not just between me, but between the, the characters, between Tom, between Elias, his two love interests, uh, with with Ella, and which was played by Archie McDonald. And so it was it was about building foundations and and building texture so that by the time we started shooting, those relationships had a sense of history, had a sense of uh, of 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 of. of of zones that were safe and zones that were violated in a good storytelling way. So it was all just a part of the process. And, and, you know, and, and you work to try to build a sense of safety so that the actors can be as vulnerable, so that therefore the impact of what they are receiving from the other actor magnifies their work. And that's what happened when, when you have you know, a scene with Coleman and Audrey McDonald, or you have a scene with Coleman and Amel Amin, or A. Philip Randolph, the power dynamics and the intensity of of the performances of his performance meeting their performances and their performance meeting his creates something that was really combustible and, and exciting and I think uh, very fragile. On that note, I got to go. I'm just going to say again, congrats on a great film. Thank you very much. 